well it's going up well there's all my wiring out back as you can see if I just get the lighting right so I've got the DC from the roof coming down here I've got to put a drain in the bottom there just threading this earth from the roof through the uh, conduits as I go they clip back into the clips this earth has to get to that switchboard over there uh, there's the array over 10 kilowatts 440 times 23 put a spare panel there if you wanted it is close to that gutter and that's not allowed possibly that might need the same thing what you do in this situation as I was saying what you have to do here is you have to put flashing there like that blocks the wind from going underneath so I've clipped all of the uh, tape conduit out back for that DC mains from the roof just trying to finish it now can't do it with one hand you get the idea that goes in there and that goes in there that comes out and the whole thing goes back on the wall I guess in hindsight the Achilles heel of this job is that a J box what you need is a uh, MCCB board these would go straight to a chassis one phase would be uh, positive one would be negative the third one well get rid of it and then plug everything into the chassis there's your bus DC bus not this thing this is just but then you know if you've got cables just sloppily going across there you've got to put a cable tray in there that's not going to look good and it's just as much work it's just the quantity of cables that I've got to put lugs on so an industrial MCCB switchboard just use the chassis instead of all this and uh, a bit of work involved but you can't argue that that's not mouse plate proof behind here and a couple of uh, parallel 50 mils there and they're coming up into here and any this will just be a bit long and you've got to put this in first and feed the rest down back through there in fact having a bit of movement has become essential because these boxes are so tight you need to push it out slide it through into the slot and then um, do the other end which is easier here I've already done that no oh. Got the uh, rooftop DC isolators here, in and out, with some links in the bottom. The right hand side is from the roof, the left hand side is going off to the RS450 200. So all of the slack from these ended up here, so these had to be perfect length, which is the Achilles heel of the job as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I've got a plan for this if I do it again. So there are pluses with this method and negatives. I think next time I'll get a 350mm thick girder C-section, make a frame, put cement sheeting out back, this on the front, not use conduit out the back so I can push in and out as much slack as I want and then build it at home and then ship it out to site. Another problem is a two pole circuit breaker in these boxes, big no, need to have a bigger uh, box. This was very tight and they all had to converge into one terminal. I could have gone in line, but then the box thickness was only so much and all the holes were across, so these boxes are a bad idea. A better idea would be a four pole breaker, 125 amp maybe, and run them in parallel in there. Yes, the prefabrication for the off-grid with a Victron should have been done in-house and taken out there in hindsight. Would have been handy if this was available. I was out in the middle of a whoop. It's a 4 to 22 millimeter step drill. They're quite common. I picked this one up at Super Cheap Auto. Maybe next time. Now that is the biggest solder joint I've ever done. It's got 6 by 16 mil earth cables. Now I've got to put a heat shrink over it. And there it is. I've got to tuck that in under there. Where does it go? It goes to here. Each 16 mil is for 150 millimeter cable because that's what uh, Australian Standard 3005 Table 5.1 wants. 
So I need two of them because I've got two 50 mils or a single 25 mil earth cable. Same here at this end. There's the hub, very similar to what that's doing for the actual DC cables. And another one down here. That's why I've got six by 16 mil all joined here. Not to mention the AC earthing. Obviously anything with an AC supply like the Multi Plus 2 inherently comes with an earth cable in there. A few earth wires in here. Well, one of them is a main earth for starters, that one there. Let's go and see where that goes. That goes to here. There's my earth stake. There's a little tag there, a bit of conduit, saddle holding the stake against the wall. All of that is part of Australian Standard 3000 for just general wiring connected to the grid. It says in the AS3000 you don't need to connect it. Anything to the grid has to have an earth stake. But this is not connected to the grid, yet the Australian Standard 4509 for off-grid says I've got to put a stake in for some reason. Oh well, back to it. Would be better off just putting an earth to the frame here, steel frame in the concrete. And the last one, of course, is the DC array. It's earthed up there on the roof. There's an MEN link to make all the safety switches go off. We've got uh, two neutrals. One is uh, for the normal output and one of them is for a generator that could come later. 229 volts. That's what we want. I've got my shutdown procedure there and my startup procedure. You can freeze that if you want to copy it. Yes, I know I left that as off when I cut and paste. I just changed the order for startup from shutdown. Obviously shutdown is all about keeping uh, the uh, load off when you switch any DC breakers. So we start with um, the AC off first and then we turn off the uh, battery with this button here. We hold that for five seconds and then we can turn off all the DC isolators. Um, the other startup procedure is to close all of these, these two DC isolators, I've decided, and then, then turn on your battery by using this button here. Three seconds. And then, uh, then I'll turn on my PV arrays. And the last of all, the AC, to uh, take the stress once again off the DC breakers. Somebody told me they closed the DC breaker like that once and there was a big arc closing it. So maybe some inrush current uh, going on into the inverter or something like that. That's got a big heavy inductor in it. So uh, let's avoid that. So commissioning stage. So things aren't exactly tidy yet. You stuck a dummy there in the left. What's that? A VE can. Must have a little resistor in it I assume. I don't know. Anyway there's another one going in VE can. That's this one here to the middle. The dummy in that one. And that one VE can has a Victron cable called VE can. And that goes into the Victron, into that terminal there, right near the VE Direct terminal, which we don't need. So that's your communication from the Serbo GX to the RS450-200. Now, the other one here is VE bus. And that VE bus goes into any VE bus terminal, into your Multi Plus 2. And what else we got? We got BMS. Obviously, that's the battery management system which goes to the battery management system into the inverter. And then from the BMS with a normal RJ45, what is it? 568 B or A or whatever it is, straight down into a plug in, in there behind there, this panel, which I can't leave open because uh, it's got a push button connected. So one very important thing about this BMS, if I go into this manual here, here we go. SMA, Selectronic. Selectronic have done the same thing as uh, Victron. See, these are just standard cables. Why couldn't they make this standard? I don't know. But anyway, for Victron, I've got to go into standard there, blue and blue and white, into pins four and five, and I've got to switch them out to seven and eight, where the brown ones normally go. So I've done that, and as you can see, at this end too, by the way, the Serbo GX end, seven and eight. That uh, plug has been changed as you can see. Out back we've got our power supply here with a little capacitor on it. That went straight into our battery terminals here. 
multi plus two. I've left it all hanging because I didn't know how long the leads were and where they were going. So obviously this GX is going to be bolted on here somewhere and the cables are all going to get tucked underneath girder clips. So here's the array with some uh, flashing stuck on the end. It's in landscape. I wanted to max out the western roof. Well, the customer did actually. This chopper over here keeps uh, spreading fertiliser everywhere. Dumped it on me while I'm up the ladder. I don't know what it looks like pebbles to me. So uh, down this edge, we've got uh, flashing to stop the. Just grab that. Here, yeah, getting in. So now it's compliant to that two S two rule. There's no air can get underneath. 